All right, let's all be seated. Let's change our direction and change the very nature of what we're, what we're doing here. And that is, let's just get into a class situation and let's start talking about soldiers of Christ. And uh, uh, what we're trying to do is just study the life of Jesus. And we're going tonight focus on the message of John the Baptist. Two or three things I want to ask you before we get there. Uh, what is the Old Testament summed up in three words, three, three sentences? Caleb, if I tell you the first one, do you think you could tell me the second one? If I tell you the first one, someone is, someone's coming. The second part is, someone is here. The third one, someone is coming again. Wow, we. Now, Caleb, how old are you? You're eight. Uh, anybody here that's 18 that doesn't know that? What about 28? How about 68? How about 78? Any 88-year-old people here tonight? You, you understand, here's a young man that knows the story of the Bible. And the story of the Bible concerns the first man to be able to say those first two sentences. And that's John the Baptist. You know, the, the message of John the Baptist, and that, that's what we're, what we're going to look at tonight and talk a lot of, about, his me- talk about his message. Now then, if you look at those cards, if, if you look on the prophet card, there is a key chapter that is listed there. And there, we have those chapters in those cards because if you need to know where things are in the Bible. You can't just say, well, it's somewhere in the Bible. Brother Keeble used to say, well, it's somewhere in the Bible. Just read the whole book. You know, people are not, not likely to do that sort of thing. But you need to know where you can read about the baptism of Jesus. Now, I've got the, I've got the key chapter up there. I've got the word prophet to indicate which card it is on. You think you can cheat and find out, or do you already know? In which book would I read about the baptism of Jesus? Of course, it's John who baptized Jesus. Where is that in the Bible? What's, what's that key chapter that I would, I would find that? Would it be in the Old Testament or New Testament? Oh, that's good. So you've eliminated 39 books. Uh, would it be in, in uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, or Acts, or all of the epistles? Where would you read about John the Baptist? In, in, the, in which, which books? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is where you'd read about John the Baptist. All right. And that'll be about the baptism of Jesus. Now, of those four, you can actually get two of them and, and still, still be right. And that is in which two of, the, of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is, uh, is the baptism of Jesus. If I tell you the, the second one is Luke, what would be your guess about the first one? And that's what, that's what ought to come up on the, cord, cord, on, the, on the board right now. That's Matthew chapter 3. If you want to open your Bible, that's where, that, is, that is exactly where we're going, where, that, that is exactly where we're going to be tonight. Now then, on that prophet card, and I think it's amazing, almost all of the questions tonight are from the prophet card. Uh, there's there's one, from, uh, one from the kings, and it looks like there are two from the priests. And the rest of these questions are from, uh, are from the prophet card. On the prophet card, what was the work of John the Baptist? If you had in just one word to talk about John the Baptist, what his work was. He was a, a baptizer. That, I cannot say that's wrong, right? If I was given that question on a test and you put that answer, to, how can I mark that wrong? That's not the word I wanted. What was he in relationship to Jesus? He was the fore, the forerunner of Jesus. What's a forerunner? You know what a runner is? What's a runner? You can use the word to define the word if you want. What, what is a runner? He's someone who? What now? What, what does for, not F O U R? F O R E. What does that mean? Before. In fact, when in the word, here was the before runner of Jesus. Now, it was not uncommon at all in those days for there to, there, there to be that forerunner that would herald the arrival. You ever watch the, uh, 
uh, presidential debate, the State of the Union address. You remember when that door opens up? I mean, those all the senators and all the congressmen are there, and the door opens up, and there is a herald that shouts out, the President of the United States. He's announcing that someone is coming. And that is exactly what John the Baptist was doing. Now, as, as, you, as you think about that, bef before we get uh, too far away from this, first let's talk about why John was called the Baptist. Was that the denomination he was a part of? No. What does what, the word Baptist mean? A baptizer. Now, that's what it means. And so you need to understand he was not John the Beloved. You know, he was not John Mark. He was John the Baptist. Isn't it amazing? Sometimes the last names come from, uh, 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 come from, from individuals. You know them by the word. I'm not sure where the Hayes come from. You come from Bailing Hayes. You know anything about your background out there in, in Oklahoma or Texas or wherever you're from and everything? Probably grew a lot of hay and way, way back there. They, these the hay balers. And then all of a sudden, they, they, became, the, they became the hays, you know. Uh, I doubt that was the case and everything. But it, it is rather interesting in it. Uh, they did that in Bible time. Simon, Simon Peter. What about the other Simon? Simon the what? Simon the Tanner. Hey, which Simon you're talking about? I'm talking about Simon the Tanner. Simon Peter had another name. Simon Bar. Simon Bar Jonah. You know what Bar means, son of? How many English names have the word son on the end, on the end of them? Was it Lyndon B. Oh, that's John's son, right? Lyndon B. John's son. Uh, anybody know anybody named Smith? How many Smiths are there? In, 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 are there, there are blacksmith, there are silversmith. Well, well, who's this? Well, that's John Smith. What, what, what about, know anybody named Barber? Where's that name come from? You know, there's Jerry Barber, who has, who has spoken here, I think, at least once. And where'd that come from? Well, he, there's back in some ancestry. There was, there, there was Jerry the drunk, and there was Jerry the whatever. And, and here's Jerry Barber. Oh, yeah, I know what Jerry you're talking about. Uh, Judas, last name. That's the city. Are you aware of that? And so here is John. Which John we're talking about? He is John the Baptist. What's that? What, why is he called that? Because that's what he did. And the word baptize, it's a Greek word, baptizo, and it means, it means to dunk. It means to plunge under. And so uh, he was John the Immerser. It's rather interesting that there is some translation, uh, at least one translation of the Bible, that whenever they came to the name John the Baptist, instead of putting the word Baptist in there, which is a Greek word, let's put the English word there, John the Immerser. And, and so that is, that is, uh, that, that, that is that, uh, uh, the why of all of that. So here comes John on the scene. He is the forerunner. You ever have a forerunner in front of you? Uh, like when, when you were learning to drive, Vivian, did your dad ever get out in the middle of the road and say, uh, Vivian is coming, Vivian is coming. You understand what I mean? I remember once my grandmother, she didn't learn to drive until she was nearly 75 years of age. She called, called a cousin of mine, uh, one of her grandsons, and says, Pat said, uh, I'm ready to drive. Go buy me a car. <laughs> and, uh, and she got a car, and uh, it's rather interesting. She said, you know, I've never had a wreck. I've had several accidents, and I have, don't know what that means. But in her mind, she never had a wreck, but she had several accidents. I remember being out in the yard one day, and uh, Jerry and Dot and Barbara and, and, and I said, myself were out. Daddy came running out and said, get in the house, get in the house. Mama is coming. <laughs> She's driving down the road, you know. That, uh, have you ever had a forerunner? Do you have a forerunner right now? You're thinking spiritual, aren't you? 
the Bible says that you have a forerunner. John the Baptist had one, and that was Jesus. Do you know who your forerunner is? Hebrews, the book of Hebrews says, Hebrews chapter 6, that Jesus is our forerunner. How about that? Where's he? Where's he right now? Yeah. Isn't that, isn't that, isn't that, isn't that a Nobel? You know what he's doing up there? Nobel's coming. Nobel's coming. Palm Beach Lakes is coming. Isn't that amazing? The church is coming. You have a forerunner. Now let's get back to the work of John the Baptist. Think about the, the importance of the message of John the Baptist. Think about how important that message was. What's his message? Someone is coming. Matthew chapter 1 says, John the Baptist says, repent. That's his message, isn't it? Repent for what? Thank you so much, Miss Eva. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Look at the screen up there. You see what looks like a misprint that's, that's on, the, on the screen up there? It's to emphasize how you spell kingdom. The kingdom is coming. Wait a minute. In the Old Testament, we've had this on one of the cards, three works that were prophesied that Jesus would do. He would come as a if I tell you the first one, can you, as a prophet, as a priest, and as a king. And so we've taken those words, prophet, priest, and king, and they become, they become the basis of, uh, uh, of these cards here because the prophet cards are the simplest cards. And we think that if you're uh, just trying to start learning the Bible, then you learn what's on the prophet card you, and, 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 and be able to know that. And you are aware, are you not, that these tests are there on the, on, on the Internet. You can just go to the church's website and find this very quiz, and you can take this quiz. We don't record the grade. We don't even know who's come. But when you get to the end of it, you'll get a grade. And if you took it about 15 times, I believe you'd make a passing grade after 15 times. You understand what I'm trying to say? No. All, this, all that is is a way to learn these cards uh, and you know what happens as you learn these cards? Where's faith come from? Faith comes by hearing. That's what the Bible says. You want to have greater faith in Jesus than this very thing that we're doing right this very minute is creating faith in you. I really believe that one of the strengths that this church has it's because we spent seven years or more studying the Old Testament in this very same environment. And there were some of you who took this so seriously that you really became students of the Bible. And I'd encourage you to do it. You know, uh, Vivian, you headed for a Christian college. You know, get these cards. Know these. And they'll think you're a Bible genius when you get up there because they, they've not been exposed to all of this. Now, don't you go up there arrogant. If, you know, you get up there and get the big head, you know, I'm going to knock your head off. You understand? But I mean, just be thankful that you know the Word of God. What's the work of John the Baptist? You know how few people know that? Do you know how few people know the things that are, that are on the screen? I'll bet you know how many prophecies there are about Jesus in the, in the Old Testament. Anybody know that number? Would it be more than 100? More than 200? More than 300? Grayson, how many? 300 and 332, thank you. 332 prophecies about Jesus in the Old Testament. Isn't that amazing? People don't know that. And so here's the message of the Old Testament. Someone is coming, someone is coming, someone is coming. And John the Baptist was, was, was that uh, so, someone that came. And so he says, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Is at hand. What does repent mean? What's that mean? You can't go to heaven if you don't repent. What's that mean? You've got to change. Change what? Change your heart on the inside and you will change on the outside. 
I know you're in Matthew, but look, look in Luke chapter 3. He, here's John the Baptist. He's, uh, he's preaching, and here he's, talking, he's telling individuals to repent. And, and, and so he describes what is involved in, in, in the kind of repentance that they do. And he had, he had so many people there. We'll come back to that a little bit later. So the people ask him, saying, what shall we do then? Now, this is after he talks about that, uh, uh, that the, the, in Luke chapter 3 and verse 9, that the axe is at the root of the trees. You, some of you are about to be chopped down and thrown into the fire. So the people said, what shall we do? And John says, just be nice. That's the, way we th that's, that's the way we sort of look at Christianity. Well, you just be nice. You be good. Did your mama ever say be good and then she defined what it was? You understand what I'm talking about? You know, there was, there was a board of education in our house that, uh, you know, that, 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 that helped us understand what nice was. He answered to them, he says, He who has two tunics, let him give one who has none. And he who has food, let him do, out wise, do likewise. That's pretty straight, isn't it? Isn't that Christianity applied whenever we talk about these things? The tax collectors also came to be baptized. Who are the tax collectors? What's the other word for tax collectors in the Bible? Don't say Republicans. What's the word for tax collectors in the Bible? Publicans. And Jesus was accused of being a friend of publicans and sinners. And, and so here are these tax collectors. They were despised by the Jews because they were collecting money. They were collecting money for, for, for the uh, Roman government. And, and so these tax collectors says, what shall we do? And, and look at how John, who has to pay his taxes... Look how he dealt with these tax collectors, and he says, you don't collect any more than what's right. Evidently, there's great dishonesty because, uh, you know, uh, uh, they collected a certain amount that belonged to, to the Roman government, but they oftentimes were individuals who collected far more than that. And so he's, he said to them, collect no more than what is appointed for you to do. What does that say? Repent. You stop doing that. You change your life. And the soldiers asked him and says, What shall we do? And he said to them, Do not intimidate anyone or accuse falsely and be content with your, uh, you are, uh, with your wages. Now as the people were in, expect, in expectation and all reason in their hearts about John, whether he was the Christ or not. And, G, and John says to them, I'm not the Christ. I am the forerunner of the Christ. And, and, and you need to have this appreciation. You need to try to live in that first century world. When God finished the Old Testament, when God finished the Old Testament, the last thing he said in the Old Testament is not someone is coming, but someone like Elijah is coming and you know who that was. We've talked about this in previous weeks. That was John the Baptist. You know the last words of the Old Testament? Someone is coming. Who's that? Someone like Elijah. What was Elijah like? Well, uh, we may have to jump down two cards, uh, two questions on this. First of all, where did John preach? In the big, in, in the big cathedrals? No, preached in the wilderness of Judea. And then the other thing is, what was the clothing that he had? Camel's hair, and uh, he ate locusts and wild honey. And, and so uh, uh, John is there. Why was John received? Let's go ahead and talk about that. We only got about 10 more minutes. And since this may be the very place to talk about it, look at, look at the closing chapters of of the Old Testament. For thousands of years there had been prophets among the Jews. And you get all of a sudden, 400 years before the coming of Jesus, and the very last Old Testament prophet comes, and what the last Old Testament prophet comes says, speaking for God, I will send before 
uh, chapter 4, verse 5, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. You see the word Lord in the Bible? See how it's spelled? It's, well, it's L-O-R-D. You see any other thing unusual about that L-O-R-D? It's all capital letters. You know what that means? Jehovah. Prepare. The, the, the dreadful day of the Lord is coming, and He's going to have a real, real impact. Look back in chapter 3. Look back in chapter 3. Behold, I will send my messenger, verse 1, and he will prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you see will suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the, of the coming, in whom you delight. Behold, he is coming, says Jehovah. Says Jehovah. Who was John? The forerunner of Jesus. But when, God, when John came to be the forerunner of Jesus, look back in Isaiah chapter 40. Here is the very verse in the Old Testament where the coming of the John the Baptist is specifically mentioned, and John quotes this verse, and Jesus quotes this verse, and both of them apply Isaiah chapter 40. Look in Isaiah, in Isaiah chapter 40. They both apply these verses to John the Baptist. Look in chapter 40, starting perhaps in verse 1. Or let's go to verse 3. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of, see the word Lord? He came to prepare whose way? This is the word Jehovah. It's not that Someone, it is, someone is coming. Jehovah is coming. And make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley needs to be filled. Every crooked place needs to be straight. And verse 5, And when, this, when uh, the Lord comes, and the glory of Jehovah will be revealed. I am the one who is coming to tell everybody, Jehovah is coming. He's not a created being. You've got to feel the force of John 1.1. 1, 1. We've quoted that. I hope you've memorized. I hope you're trying to memorize John 1.1. 1, 1. When I say 1.1, 1, 1, I think you'd think in the beginning, because that's the beginning, and that's the beginning of, in the beginning was the Word. Now verse 14 says, that Word is the one that became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory. The glory is the only begotten of the Father. In the beginning was the Word. That's Jesus. And the Word was with God. And the Word was an angel. The Word was a God with a little g. Are you aware that's the way the Jehovah's Witness uh, a Bible translates that very verse? Not that he was God. He was a God, many gods. And that's all he was. He was a God. That's not what that says. He is Jehovah. And I have come to announce to you that someone is coming and that someone who is coming is Jehovah. For 400 years, God had not said anything. And then all of a sudden, in the wilderness of, Ju of Judea, John the Baptist clothed in camel's hair. I wonder what that felt like. Inside or out? You got skin out, you got the hair inside? I don't know. He's got a fur coat, but it's not the kind you'd think about. Doesn't have that velvet kind of lining on the inside. His clothing was camel's hair, animal hide, a leather belt around him. And what did he eat? He ate locusts and? How do you like locusts? <laughs> want them deep fried or sauteed? Uh, you tell me which, which way you want your locusts. I think it, think it is. You know what a locust is, don't you? My, my, my great-grandson, the one that lives in Little Rock, uh, 
came, came out, I, I, I think I told you this story, about uh, came out of his Wednesday night Bible class, and my daughter, talking to her grandson, said, what would you study about tonight? Study about the baptism of Jesus. Oh, well, tell me about it. Well, when he was baptized, something flew down out of heaven, sat on top of him. It was a dove. And the seven-year-old and the three-year-old went in the same class, and the three-year-old said, it wasn't, it wasn't a dove. It was a duck. Something flies out of heaven that starts with the letter D, and if you're three years old, you don't know the word dove. So here's this teacher trying to teach this, and a duck flew down on him. And, and so then my, my daughter asked her grandson, well, what else? Somebody in there ate a, ate a lot of grasshoppers. <laughs> you ever eaten a grasshopper? I did one time. Uh, there was, a, there was a, a place in, when I was a student at, at Lipscomb years ago, you could buy unusual foods, and I so I had a fried grasshopper. I just want to know what they tasted like. I've, I've, I, you know, uh, the uh, the only two grasshoppers I've ever eaten, I ate there. Just ate one of them, but it was the first and last grasshopper I'm ever going to eat. You know, so uh, it 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 it, uh, it it didn't have much taste. It was deep fried and everything, and it's crunchy. You know, understand what I uh, Chitling is, I, not, uh, fried chitling is what it tasted like, I think, if you fry them you know, f- firm enough and everything. Uh, that's amazing. Uh, he was out there. Wait a minute. What else did he eat? What kind of honey? What's wild honey? <laughs> can you buy, that's kind you buy down at Publix, right? <laughs> Safely kept in that little jar, and you pick up that little jar, and you've got no problem at all. How would you like to gather your own wild honey clothed in camel's hair? (laughs) That's what he's out there eating. And he's saying, prepare the way for Jehovah. Who are you, John? Matthew chapter 3. In those days came John the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now you look down at verse 5, who went out to be baptized of John? Jerusalem, Judea, all the regions, uh, you know, uh, around Jordan in that wilderness area, they came to hear John preached. What's he saying? You better straighten up. You remember prophet, priest, and king? This kingdom is about to be established. This thing that you've longed to have all of these, these times, This kingdom is about to be established. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And everybody believed him. Can I show you one other illustration of the firmness of John? We looked at what he told the tax collectors. We looked at at what he told uh, the soldiers. Go look in Matthew chapter 3. There are some other folks in, in that audience. And, and uh, when he saw, Matthew chapter 3, look at verse 7. When he saw that many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear the fruits that show repentance. Who are these? Hypocritical, religious, you know how detrimental hypocritical religious leaders are? Yeah. Hypocritical politicians, I've got your back and I'm going to take care of you. How do you feel about that? How do you feel about somebody who says, I've got your soul? And they're not treating it honestly. And John the Baptist looked at these religious leaders and said, you bunch of snakes. Wrath is about to come, and then he says, even now the axe is at the foot of the tree. Some tree is about to be cut down. 
And that's when he talks about the wrath that is, is to come. And the axe is right there. Somebody's ready to pick it up and chop it. It's about time to chop the tree down. And when that tree is chopped down, every tree which does not bear good, good, good food, good fruit, is cast into the fire. What an amazing character John the Baptist is. I guess that's it for tonight. We didn't get as far as I wanted us to do. Next week, we're going to continue going down this line. We're going to talk about the actual baptism of Jesus. John did not want to baptize Jesus. That's an amazing thing. If you don't know why, make sure that when Jesus says, baptize me, John said, I'm not going to do it. When Jehovah God said, baptize me, John said, I'm not going to do it. Hello? What on earth would make John, who's the forerunner of Jehovah, say, I'm not going to do what you told me to do? Come back next week and we'll talk about this. Thank you very much for coming.